Welcome to Tag Along. I'm your host, Bilal Khan, and I have with us here on Model Shukri. We're going to be talking about the 99 names of Allah. And today, now, in this episode, we are doing Al Mu'min. Mu'min. I love Al Mu'min, and the reason is because I always, you know, Al Mu'min, what does Al Mu'min mean? That is a good question. What does Mu'min mean? Well, Al Mu'min is someone who's a believer, right? Exactly, a believer. So it was always like you're reading it, and it's just, what does that even mean? Allah is the believer? The believer in what? Yeah. Believer in himself. And so. Um, when you're looking at this word and you look at the meanings, you'll find that there's a couple of meanings. One is Allah Azza wa Jal, uh, the one who fulfills his promises, okay. al mu'min, meaning al musaddaq. He's the one who, when he does something, he's truthful. He's truthful oh, so a mu'min is not only is it that they believe, but they're truthful in that belief. No, the, Allah Azza wa Jal, when he says he's going to do something, okay. Innaka well, nasi because it's, liyaw, it's, it's with the man. Yes. Okay. So when Allah promises that He's going to do something, that's it. There's no doubt in it. The 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 ayah says, "Oh Allah, you are going to resurrect people. You're going to gather people for a day in which there's no doubt. There's no doubt about the day of judgment. He right. said He's going to do it. There is going to be a day of judgment. That's done. Okay. Right. So that's the first connotation of the mu'min is that so Allah, Allah is the one who fulfills the promises. Fulfills so the promises. I mean, because the thought that I just realized the connection that I, that I just made is in relation to the word iman and its root being amana. Which also is connected to Amana, which has to do with the fact that one trusts. And there's and so also a refugee services. <laughs> Amana refugee services here in Houston. Here's our plug. <laughs> but uh, but the but the thought that knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al mu'min, meaning that he will fulfill that promise, and you as someone who has Iman needs to believe and have trust in Allah that he will fulfill that. Exactly. Got it. Which leads us to the next one, which is the next connotation of Mu'min is that he's the one who fulfills what his belief, what his slaves expect of him? Okay, and that what does that mean? It means that, for example, he's not going to let you down. So, if as a slave one expects that mercy, like the verse of that poet who said that Abu Nas, yeah. Uh, at, but at the same time, if somebody believes that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will punish them, well, you shouldn't. Okay, you know what I mean. When a person is near their deathbed, yeah. I mean, it's uh, that fear is good when a person's you know Allah. living their life and it's a good check. Yeah. Right, but when a person's near the end of their their death, or when they're close to their death, or they're advanced in their age, that's when a person should really hope in the mercy of Allah. And it's actually a sunnah that when a person is, you know, near their death, when you're sitting next to the person who's you know about to die or something like that, you're reminding them of their good deeds. Okay, that's what Amr ibn As's you know son was doing when Amr ibn As was about to pass away, and his son's like, "Weren't you with a companion with the Prophet and didn't you? And didn't you? And didn't you?" And didn't you? And Amr made his famous statements that he made near the end of his words. Uh, but I don't want to get into that right now. But the what point the being, I just said I don't want to get into that. <laughs> he just like left me as a clip hanger. What Amr said was, he said, you know, uh, at some point when I was uh, a mushrik, yeah. I hated the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi and there was no one who was more hated to him than me. Uh -huh. And if I had died in that state, I would have been from the people of the Hellfire. I knew where I would have gone. And then there, I accepted Islam and... The, there was no one who was more beloved to me than the Prophet wasallam. And if I had died during that period, I would have hoped to be of the people of Jannah. Yeah. Like I have a good expectation of where I would have been in that state. But then after he died, we became rulers. Uh -huh. And I really don't know where I'm going to end up. Okay. Okay. So this was like, and his son at the same time is telling him like, you know, he's reminding him of his good deeds. And that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to remind people in those moments about their good deeds so that they have hope in meeting Allah. And so Allah Azza wa is as his slaves expect of him. As Allah says in the Hadith Al-Qudsi, he says, I am as my slave expects me to be. And so we're supposed to uh, expect goodness from Allah Azza wa always. No matter how dark it gets in our lives, that we know that Allah Azza wa is Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, and we know that He's the merciful, and we know that He takes care of His slaves. Got it. Is, is, is that still a part of Mu'min, or is that a different? That's all part of Mu'min. Okay. And part of Mu'min also is that Allah is the one who testifies to His own oneness. Right? Yeah. And so it does have this connotation of he's, he's the first one to testify to His oneness. And that's the famous verse in Ali Imran, where Allah says, Shahid Allahu annahu la ilaha illahu. Allah says, Allah testifies that there's nothing worthy of worship except for him. And the angels testify that to as well, as well as the uh, people of knowledge. Also of the connotations of mu'min mm -hmm. is aman. And aman means security. Okay. And so Allah is the one who grants security. And Allah is the one who protects. And Allah Azza wa Jal is the one who rescues 
his servants so from oppression. Gun. You did jump the jump gun, but that's normal for you, mashallah. <laughs> right? So Allah Azza is the one who grants security and he grants uh, safety. And so when a person's in fear, a person is, you know, um, desiring for protection, yeah. that they use this name, that okay. they call upon Allah Azza wa by the name Al-Mu'min. And he transforms people's fears into security in the dunya as well as in the hereafter. So seeking protection. Yeah. And Allah Azza is the one who makes people secure. Allah Azza is the one who makes cities secure and countries secure. And if you're a person who just to reflect on how Al-Mu'min made the Haram, Mecca and Medina, and he made these places secure over the you know vast majority of these past 1400 years it indicates really um his his mercy. his mercy and his yeah. ability yeah you know, that allah has made these cities secure although i mean one might argue that al-hajj has been used to make cities well, that's why i said the vast majority mm-hmm. right it's not just uh it doesn't some people have transgressed the boundaries of the haram but if you're looking at it from a historical context it's absolutely in incredible. general yeah for okay sure. cool is there anything else on this? That's a mu'min, no? Al mu'min. Yeah, so just really quickly, just how to interact, just like I mentioned, how do you interact with a mu'min? You look at these different aspects, and every single one of us experiences fear at some point in time. You want to make sure that you know to call upon a mu'min. Got it.